Hey you, yes you, I'm talking to you. Person that's not subscribed, I'm watching this video right now. Hit the subscribe button, it's free. I'm trying to hit 50 subscribers before the end of the year. It'd be highly appreciated. And if not, then the milk in your fridge will go bad. And but have a wonderful day. Back to our regular schedule program. Bye. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my second video. You guys love the Sox video. Much appreciation to everyone that's watched. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out after this video. Much appreciation to everyone that's watched it. Love you all. And an FYI, before we begin this video, I'll be going back to my regular scheduled uploads, which is 1:25 p.m. Pacific time. And if you guys would like me to go back to weekly uploads maybe i can do that once a month for a week so comment down weekly for me to do a week uploads but now let's get into this movie review and starting with this movie finally after eight years after eight long years we got the movie and let me tell you it went through production hell different producers different actors this and that so when we finally got it it wasn't looking too good the critics were hitting this movie hard low blow after low blow and let me just say this after all the critic talk and everything i was so skeptical of this movie i was so scared to watch it because it was either gonna be, it was either a hit or a miss and i'm gonna be honest at first i thought it was gonna be a letdown but after watching this movie let me just say it was not a letdown and i'm gonna just say this i'm i am a casual fan i have played a few of the games i am deep in the lore and i'm gonna try to rate this movie with the least amount of tinted goggles that i can because that would be unfair if i you know rated this like, as a fan and like you know had tinted goggles and everything i'm gonna try to rate this as fairly as i can so let's get into some of the background of the movie this movie takes place roughly around the early 2000s it doesn't say that a hundred percent but most likely it does and this movie follows two characters the main one being mike and his little sister abby this movie follows mike and his trauma with him losing his little brother and him trying to find a job which he does find after being fired from his previous one he finds a job at freddy's fazbear's pizza which has a dark history that he does not know about but later does find out and the person that hired him has a dark history as well which he later does find out as well but throughout the movie it does show him recurring going back and forth into the freddy's fazbear's pizza and finding dark history every time he goes back there and the place does have connection with his dark past of his brother which he later does find out and does meet a character there that is familiar with the pizzeria named vanessa that also has a dark history there so as the movie goes on they explore more of the dark history that happened in the 80s and why it got shut down in the first place because the pizzeria did get shut down and mike does find out that there is a person there that has connection to his past and what happened to his past traumas but now let's get into the goods let's get started with the goods and that being said the cameos were amazing i love the cameos and how they showed appreciation to their fan base and for the people who helped their franchise become what it is today and every time i saw a cameo i was like leonardo dicaprio in once upon a time in hollywood dude it was just amazing cameo after cameo like they didn't affect the movie that much but when you saw the cameos they were amazing i loved every cameo that they had it was just amazing you might have seen them on youtube but they were great cameos in my opinion but moving on from the cameos let's, let's get into the characters the characters were great mike abby and william afton played by the great great matthew lewd he was amazing in this role he was perfect he killed this role like every scene he was in he stole it he matched the energy of who he played as as the villain i'm not gonna say who it was he has showed it in the trailer but he was perfect as that and his easter egg the voice line that he says is perfect and there is one flaw that we'll get into later on it isn't a bad but there is something i wish that he did that we'll get into later on then moving on from the characters the animatronics dude were so good i'm so happy these only practical effects they felt so heavy the sound design was amazing they looked and felt so heavy they moved like an animatronic wood they were amazing i like how like everything just had weight to it just every death had a sense of weight the animatronics were just perfect you heard every footstep like everything just was perfectly sounded everything visuals were amazing to the practical effects and it being on an actual location were amazing i happy that it wasn't a cgi fest like what movies are doing now just everything cgi nothing is real practical this movie is all practical inside an actual location of finance of freddy's maybe like an actual finance of freddy's but like the building was actually there the, all the set design was real everything was good practical was good and i said this helped the movie so much it have like this such great atmosphere great atmosphere people were saying it doesn't have great atmosphere in my opinion it had great atmosphere it was perfect in my opinion i just loved it and speaking of the atmosphere and the visuals the easter eggs you had to look out for them in the background of movies but they were amazing when you noticed them they were great i love the easter eggs in this movie they didn't play a huge part but when you notice them like they were great they were like the cameras i was like they're not the captures just pulling like at my screen they were amazing 
And then also one thing I liked, this was in the trailer, so don't worry, this is not a spoiler. But one thing I liked as well was the flashback scenes. They were very enticing. They didn't like, you know, like they weren't like a cheap way to explain the story. Like they enhanced the story and said they didn't like, you know, like cheaply explain like the lore or anything. They helped us understand what, what Mike was going through, but then also enhance what happened to those kids in the movie. So this will end the goods and with every movie there is bad. So let's get into the bads. Now starting with the bads, the CGI. The CGI was a little spotty here and there. Like for one scene, I'll give an example, it involved electricity CGI. It did not look the best in my opinion. I felt like it was just a little wonky. The CGI again, there's very little CGI in this. It's mainly practical, but when there is CGI, it can be a little wonky here and there. I'm not saying it's terrible, it's like, oh, it makes this seem like bad. It just, I felt like they could have maybe used more budget on the CGI for that being said. It really wasn't too bad for the CJ, but it was kind of still bad. And then uh, the other bad is kind of cringe slash bad writing or bad scenes. Just some of the like some of the scenes are cringe. Like if like it just face palming cringe. It's like why did they show that? They didn't have to show that. Or the writing, just like why did they write that? It made no sense. And transitioning from that, Freddy roaring. This isn't a spoiler at all, but Freddy roars for no reason. And that's why it's going back into the cringe. I do not know why they made Freddy Roar. It was one of the most cringiest things I've ever seen in the movie. Like, it was so cringe. I don't know why he roared. It was just weird. And this might be a spoiler in the movie, so skip this part. I'm not for sure if it is, but skip to this time. But getting into it, the aunt. The aunt was probably one of the most useless plot lines ever, in my opinion. Like, she could not be in the movie. Everything still plays out how it does in the movie. I just wasn't a fan of her. She was annoying, first of all, for no reason. She didn't have to be annoying. Was filler, if that makes sense. Like, she was a filler plot point, in my opinion. Like, she was not needed at all. And everything in the movie could have still happened, even if she even if she wasn't in the movie. The same things would have still happened. So, in my opinion, she was kind of useless. And she is a bit bad because, like, she just was useless. She was kind of just filler in the movie, which I didn't like. Let's get into the neutrals. Now with the neutral starting forward, the neutrals will not affect the rating. It is not good or bad for the movie. These are just things that are 50-50 in my opinion, and it is up for up to you to decide if it's good or bad for yourself. But starting with the rating of PG-13, PG-13 doesn't hinder the movie. And I was actually surprised of how much they were able to show, but I was wondering and curious how it would be if there was rated R. But again, PG-13 does not affect the movie in my opinion, because PG-13 was surprising for how much they were able to show. And I do think that PG-13 was a good rating for it, you know, for the audience being said as well. I think PG-13 was fine. But also, another neutral I have is Matthew Lillard, because he is so killer, so killer in this movie. But I wish that he was showing more, because he's showing in like maybe 20 to 25% of the movie, which is so sad to say, because I thought he'd be like in more like maybe 50% of the movie at least. But no, he is showing very little, but that doesn't matter because when he is shown in the movie, he kills it. He kills every single scene that he is in. It is like he's in Scream again. It is like, dude, he is the killer. It's like, dude, he is Stu Mocker again. It is so good seeing him on screen again. Just, I love seeing him. I just wish he was shown more. That is why he is a neutral. And for the final neutral, I feel like a certain character should have died towards the end of the movie, which they didn't, which is understandable. And you know what makes sense? And I'm not going to blame the movie for it, but I feel like if they died, it would have added more impact to the movie and to the character that almost tried to kill them. I'm not going to say who it was or who the character was, but I feel like their death would have been a lot impacted of the movie if they would have died. But these are the neutrals, the goods and bads and the neutrals. So let's get into the rating of the movie now. Now with the rating after all being said with all the goods, the bads, and the neutrals, I will have to give this a 9 out of 10 if I was being biased and if I was not being realistic, but sadly being realistic with myself, I have to give this a 7 out of 10. Maybe a 8 out of 10, but a 7 out of 10 just to be safe. And I really did enjoy these games getting their own movie after so long. It was so good watching it on the big screen. And they did have some flaws, but the goods did outweigh the bads in my opinion. And it just, in my opinion, is just such a good movie. It isn't the best, there is flaws, but it is a good movie. And I also love that they gave you the option for either digital or watching it in theaters if it is still available in theaters. Because not everyone that is in the fan is going to be able to watch it in theaters or want to watch it on theaters. So you can watch it on digital, which I do enjoy. And I say watch it in theaters if you can because it helps with the experience. But if you watch it digital, that is fine as well. And with that being said, there are a mid credit scene. Where basically where like the credits roll and there is a mid credit there. Like a mid credit scene. And then there are two Easter eggs as well. 
while the credits are rolling it is a music easter egg so if you are interested in that stay towards the credit usually the easter eggs are like more towards the ending of the credit so it is taking a while so if you are watching digital you can just skip towards like maybe the end credits if you are really interested in the easter egg but this was the long awaited finance at freddy's movie and i hope you guys enjoyed this review of the movie i did enjoy it and i hope you guys do as well and comment down below your thoughts on this movie please do not spoil it for anyone else please don't so comment down below your thoughts on the movie and maybe anything i can improve with this video but leave a like and subscribe. Bye-bye.